Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings and see what God has done. Okay, way back Wednesday. Today, Joe's going to ramble about a day that's kind of interesting. Um, and because of the day he's chosen to do, her way back Wednesday, our race is going to be all women. So I do apologize if you're a gentleman and you're a lady today. Just remember, it's all for fun. But before we do that, I have to for to load. We've got one more live. Friday will begin um, our December. And don't forget, we have a new challenge. Sort of. Um, we thought it would be fun to do a ugly sweater a contest um, collaboration thingy. Uh, you can make an ugly sweater. You can make a cute sweater. You can make both. We just want to see how creative you are. We're going to start looking for some cheap, inexpensive, plain um, sweaters, and then we'll decorate them, and we'll put them up to vote. If you want to join us, feel free. Please do. Ah, right now, I finally loaded. Hold on. All right, here we go. Start. All right, we've got Trending and Bluegrass and Laura and Cheap. There's my Crafty. Melinda. Oh, looks like Cheap's currently in the lead. There's Oceans and Wright and Carrie and Sarah. Lucky Cat and Pete. Popcorn and Embark Nation and Mona. Kenny and Debbie and Spirit and Tour and Journey. Uh, let's see here. Just Doing is currently in the lead. Oh, no, Ocean's in the lead again. I was like, yeah, oh, we got a person from the back. We got Heather and Pete and Popcorn and Old Fart coming in from the back. There's Bluegrass. Oh, it's going to be close. It's going to be a close one. Oh, it looks like New York Girl. New York Queen, excuse me. Oh, all right, we got New York Heart. Uh, what? Wrong one. New York Gal Heart and New York Gal Heart ASMR. Heart is a relaxing kind of channel. And then ASMR, which is, of course, ASMR. Ooh, that's a pretty flower today. Look at that beautiful rose today. She's going to destroy it, but it's beautiful before she destroys it. Check her out, like, share, comment, have a good day. I am a genius. All right, Mr. Bed, what are we going to talk about today? Well, today we did a little uh, researching of ideas, and I came across this one because I think Angel would love it for some reason. Uh, it's called Choose Women Wednesday. It's celebrated every year on the Wednesday after Thanksgiving. Uh, this year held on November the 29th, tomorrow, or for those of you watching, today. Um, the day seeks to appreciate, support, listen to, and stand up for women. It also attempts to create awareness about the many women working for and successfully running businesses in a world that still thinks a woman's place is at home. The day is celebrated in hopes of countering these old notions that instead of making people realize that the potential and power women hold, the day educates both customers and businesses on making the right choice and uplifting female entrepreneurs and promoting women-owned, owned businesses. Now, just off the top of my head, thinking of the businesses that we deal with around town in the general area, uh, I know Angel's Little Floral Shop down there on St. Joe is run by a, a very talented and gifted woman. Um, also, one of our uh, favorite places that we like to eat, uh, Jambo and Jew, both the one that was in Sturgis and the one here in Rapid, which is still in business, uh, both are run by women. So 
you know, there are a lot of different places that a woman can either step into and fill a niche, or they'll discover the niche all on their own and start working with it. Now, this particular event, uh, Choose Women Wednesday, is an international platform established in 2014 uh, by Women's Entrepreneurship Day organization, non-governmental movement that seeks to empower, celebrate, and support women in business to reduce poverty around the world. Now, it takes place on the Wednesday after Thanksgiving, as its creation was inspired by the holidays devoted to shopping and giving, Small Business Saturday, and Giving Tuesday. Now, Choose Women Wednesday initially began as Women on Wednesday and has gone by a few names, including Women Own Wednesday and uh, Pound Sign Women Wow, Women Wednesday and Women Wednesday until it was finally changed to Choose Women Wednesday in 2016. That's a lot of changes in two years. Yes. Now, while the day's main agenda is to support female entrepreneurs and women-owned businesses, it also has the broader goals of uplifting, uplifting people from poverty and bridging the gender gap in all areas. It is more than just a celebration. It is a movement about the fight to ensure women receive the spotlight and support that they deserve. Uh, this fight is based on the fact that women are still not treated the same as their male counterparts when it comes to compensation and opportunities in the workforce. Uh, research has shown that the average female entrepreneur gets less than half of the funding of her male counterpart. That is why it's important to encourage movements like these that get people involved in listening to, supporting, and standing up from women from all walks of life for the betterment of everyone. It's not just a time to close the gender gap, but also the time to shatter the glass ceiling and tell people everywhere that the age of favoring men is over. It's time to look beyond the patriarchy and choose women. Now, a couple of the little highlights that they had in here that are kind of interesting. The first female-owned business. Now, for those of you who want to do some, you know, deep digging, some deep hunting for, you know, facts, the first female-owned business that they've got on record dates back to 1739 here in the States South Carolina and Eliza Lucas Pitney took over the family's plantations at the ripe old age of 16. Most of us probably weren't even driving cars that old. Now, in the 18th and 19th centuries, women operated businesses just as well. Uh, they started operating small businesses obtained from inheritance or for supplementing their income. Uh, I remember on some of the stories that I've been reading about out here on the plains, Sometimes the women, that's, that's what their job was, was to maintain the house to make sure there were two incomes coming in while, you know, sadly to say, the crops died and withered from, uh, you know, slight droughts. Now, things really started getting, you know, mobilized in the 1900s when the rise of feminism led to a female entrepreneurs becoming more accepted. Uh, you know, some of the more different fields that they would be seen in. Some of them were named to CEO positions. Um, I can think of Amy Trask. She got named to be one of the executives for the Oakland Raiders at the time. Uh, you know, some ladies who were on our city council, they got their start because they opened up a hair salon. But they had enough sense that people said, you know, if she could do this, I bet she would be good on city council. It worked. Now, the first female millionaire, and Sue <laughs> mentioned this that she'd seen the picture of, there was a lady named Madame C.J. Walker. Now, in 1919, she became the first female millionaire selling homemade hair care products to black women. Again, they found a niche. They were able to you know, use it to a good purpose, and it wound up leading to a, a real well career that she was able to do economically well. Now, some of the interesting frequently asked questions that they had uh, for the first one, what is the percentage of female entrepreneurs versus male entrepreneurs? And interestingly enough, right now in recent years, the women are actually outpacing the men, 47 to 44 percent. And, you know, some of them could just be people looking to take one of their crafts and turn it into a regular, you know, you know, jewelry. Some of them might look at uh, doing things with hair options. 
a lot of it just depends on what people want to do. Some of them do fabrics, clothing lines. And with the social media marketplace that we have right now, it's really hard not to think about people going into business. The trick is, is to keeping it going. Now, the next stat that they have that's kind of interesting, and you got to wrap your mind around these numbers. How many feel fe female entrepreneurs are in the world? Go ahead and stretch your number around that. Think about how many billion people there are on the planet. How many have gone out and said, you know, I want to make a business myself. Interestingly enough, women entrepreneurs statistics show that 252 million entrepreneurs out of approximately 582 million in the world are female. So a little less than half, but still over 250 million entrepreneurs out there are female. That's a lot of ladies stepping up. Right. Now, how many female entrepreneurs are there here in the States, in the U.S.? Well, currently, there are more than 12.3 million female entrepreneurs in the U.S. Uh, that can be caused by several different things. Some people, again, might, uh, might like the idea of instead of flipping burgers or say, you know, in school they were really good at art or they were really good at, you know, crafts. You know, some of them took shop pretty seriously. And they got to branch into other fields. Angel, <laughs> Angel has gone through pretty much the gamut on different things that she would have liked to have done. Whether it's music, whether it's musical instruments, whether it's tattoos, whether it's crafts, whether it's working with plants. Manga music. <laughs> this, this is a child that has more than a few doors on which way she could go with her talents. And if one of them happens to turn into a business, you know, we're all for supporting her. You know, it, there, there's some great ideas. Both me and Sue, you know, less than a year after we got married, we were uh, running a card shop, a bookstore, and a CD shop up in Keystone. And surprisingly enough, Sue didn't realize that she was the primary owner. No, but, <laughs> I wasn't because it wasn't my store. I was technically on there, but that was just because we needed... Uh, for tax purposes, but right. I didn't really do anything in the shop. Yeah, well, you, you did manage the, manage the cash register on occasion too. Yeah, but again, you know, the, the the big thing there is if somebody is willing to, you know, put out the effort, and in this day and age, it's also pretty good because there's a lot of places that are looking at the fact. Well, you know, this McDonald's might be offering fifteen dollars an hour, but you've got kids that are making, you know six to eight hundred dollars a week online doing videos doing sales you know there's a lot of different ways that they can use their creativity to that function which is kind of cool now they act they talk about observing how to you know choose women wednesday how to observe it the first and easiest way you can think of is shopping at women-owned businesses uh, look at you know visit stores restaurants websites owned by women and they conscientious shopping choices there are several women owned businesses in nearly every field working hard to make it big um isn't uh isn't where you work uh, run by a female ceo if i remember right i believe so yeah because she was there when i was there I'm trying to remember what her name is I'm pretty sure it starts with a k yeah and then you, you look at some of the places up there at the mall uh, some of the jewelry stores are well operated to that regard. I'd, I'd have to do some digging further on CEOs for some of the uh, the bigger chain outlets. But the big thing also is again, you know, you're thinking about Small Business Saturday, um, Vintage Chick Six Hundred Five. Gee, there's one that isn't. You can't tell it's, it's female controlled or anything. But you know, the the key thing there is it takes a little, you know, research, a little bit of look. And you're going to be able to find some pretty good businesses out there. Now, uh, number two is to support women. Support women-owned businesses by shopping there and recommending them to your friends and family. Uh, every new customer helps. Sometimes if I see a, a neat ad on Facebook, I'll take and I'll share it out just because, you know, I, I know some of those businesses are hurting thanks to the city's uh, inability to properly destroy roads. 
road destruction. Uh -huh. Road destruction. Uh, next up was they talk about raising awareness. You know, share information about Choose Women Wednesday and female entrepreneurship on your social media. Educate yourself and others so we can all live in a more Elegarian society. That's a fun word. Mm. Now, five interesting facts about female entrepreneurs. Uh, interesting enough, number one, women are prone to start businesses. Women uh, are nearly one-third more likely to, than men to start business out of necessity in most parts of the world. You know, if they're willing to make the step up again, it's filling in a, ni a niche, something that's needed, and usually it works out really well. Now, number two, they mention, is unequal distribution. Women from low- to middle-income countries are more likely to, to enter early-stage entrepreneurship compared to those in higher-income countries. It's filling in the need, you know? If they're not getting a lot of money from the, the male counterpart, maybe that's where she needs to step in and she starts, you know, doing extra stuff like selling, you know, might, might be selling sandwiches. I was watching one thing where a lady was doing fry bread and it turned out to be a really good commodity because she was able to sell them at like football games in the nearby area. Some people can find that niche and fill it real good. Uh, number three is that there are many of them. You know, female entrepreneurs make up about one third of all entrepreneurs around the world. Uh, I'm thinking of some of the other countries that uh, we've seen videos of, places like uh, Egypt. Mexico, uh, over in Thailand, you'll see the little street vendors and stuff. Sometimes that's just a mom, you know, finding a way to try to make ends meet, you know, selling food to uh, tourists and stuff that come through the neighborhood. Or it might even be local businesses, you know, they have those food carts, you know. It's uh, an interesting way to make ends meet, but sometimes some of those food carts make some serious money when the need uh, rises, that and the thing is, with some of those businesses, they really can't go very far away from their workplace. So, you know, it's kind of a match made in heaven. They've got the food. They've got the business. So, Now, interesting to number one, you, you never will guess this one. Mm. Uh, take our daughters to work day. No. No? You'll never take Angel to work with you? She usually just comes in on her own. Comes in on her own. <laughs> uh, but a lot of businesses don't do that anymore. Not anymore, you know. It said that this was originally uh, the Take Our Daughters to Work Day was popularized in 1993 to support career exploration for girls. Which I think is an awesome idea, but I honestly don't remember it ever being advertised in any of the places that I worked. Mm -hmm. I was trying to remember that first year that I worked if they had something, because I could have swore I remember seeing some kids. But I can't remember if that was just part of uh, Ben's uh, one of his projects, or if there was actually a serious reason for it. But, then again, I never did get a chance to ask my boss about that either. Now, again, the, the number five, you know, the one we talked about before, the Madame C.J. Walker, first female millionaire. Interestingly enough, she was born to former slaves, orphaned at seven, and built her empire out of nothing. So, which means she basically got to see where the, 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 the bottom of the, the start is, and she wound up becoming a millionaire doing it. So, you know, it's it's something that can be done. Some people it takes creativity. Some people it just takes that the right moment at time. Um, I mean, I think about your, um, your one cousin up there in uh, Lee, no, Deadwood, that makes the... Uh, my aunt. You your mean. aunt, yeah. And, you know, there was a niche... Although my cousin does have a, her own business as well, so... But she does cleaning. Right. And one of my friends, that's what his mom did, is that she started out uh, cleaning businesses at night. And she did such a good job. Now, if I remember right, I think she's got four workers that work with her. And they do over 25 businesses downtown. It's just that, you know, they came so highly requested that they're like, well, she's going to have to add some extra, you know, staff to help her do all those uh, offices. Mm -hmm. Now, why choose Women Wednesday is important, uh, pretty much. A, it supports women. The day encourages people to shop from women-owned businesses and promotes fe fe female entrepreneurs. It's all about supporting women and alleviating poverty around the world. Now, here in Rapid, we do have uh, pretty much like any major city 
which I won't even call us major. But you do have parts of the town that are low income. You have some parts that are middle class. And then you have the, the ones that we call Snob Hill. Uh, but you do you hear about places that are selling, you know, Indian tacos on occasion. Um, and I won't exactly call yard sales as a form of income. It's, it's a short branch to try to bring in some extra money, but it's not technically a regular business. But we have seen places that have built up uh, thrift stores. Uh, there's one over there close to the old uh, Safeway. That one that's, that's on the corner. Woman. I don't know if that's owned by a woman. I think those three ladies are the ones that own it. I don't know. Well, there's we'll no have to, to do some research and check no that out. There's no way to know that. Yeah, have to take a look into look into their uh, directory. But it, you know, you look at the different places that have female entrepreneurs. Um, B, it says that it aims to discontinue inequality. And it says, unfortunately, discrimination and inequality are still very real problems that women have to deal with when it comes to the corporate world. We can change this by going out there, doing our bit, and helping women-owned businesses thrive. Uh, C, it inspires young girls everywhere. The day and the message it sends serves as inspiration for little girls everywhere, so they too can grow up to be the master of their own lives. It teaches people that entrepreneurship is not just a man's field. But primarily, you know, the, the big thing there that it's looking for is it's trying to give women who have made that first step into getting into business, whether it's in food, whether it's in clothing, whether it's, uh, you know, I, I, I know my, my, my wife doesn't like the idea of daycare being considered a full-time I occupation. I didn't say that. A lot of daycare workers um, is... is a job and it's mm -hmm. uh, it supports family and your mom did that for many years the problem is we can't include her as a pitcher so it doesn't really I mean I don't I think it's important to mention her because she did you know do a lot for your family in supporting that but we can't you really use that and I, I mean I've also seen some daycares that aren't exactly out of the home either you know they've built their own individual business right but this still is as long as they're still owned by a woman I, it would count right it's not, I'm not opposed to counting any business if it supports a family. It has, though my biggest requirement is it has to support a family. So you can't, can, you can't count hobbies that bring in money. Like if you sell on eBay or Etsy or, or whatever, and it doesn't pay the bills every month. I'm not talking about occasionally. Right. If it doesn't do it every month, then it doesn't count. Right. And the big thing I'm looking at also is trying to. You know, the, the, the big thing there I would look at is finding the businesses that do meet that niche and then supporting those. Or, you know, if they happen to be really close to, you know, becoming that successful, by all means, let's prop them and push them to that level so that, you know, they can go from being a hobby to being a full-time career. You know, because, you know, there are people that would love to have, you know, to be able to chase that hobby into something bigger you know more power to them um i mean you take and also look at some of the uh i can think of some of the sports memorabilia places i'd have to dig up some names that sell and are female i think there was a couple in denver that i remember and then you know like with any hobby the the trick there is you know it would be nice if one of these companies actually had a a general pull down of female owned businesses. And I bet there probably is something like that on the internet somewhere, so that if people want to specialize strictly in females for their businesses, I bet they could find some. But that's what our, our little venture here is, dealing with the twenty ninth of November. If you folks have any businesses that uh, you want to give a shout out to, by all means, put them into the comments. And uh, we might even revisit this in the beginning of next year and uh, take a look at some of the other businesses we can think of. But this has been Joe the Bearded Historian uh, for a Way Back Wednesday. We will talk to you folks later. Have a good one.